Time for another walk and talk. I'm going to go about two miles and let's see how long what I'm saying is interesting to you and to me. I often, uh, during my walk, come past a very old cemetery that's around where I live, dates back into the uh, Civil War era for sure, and a couple of families grouped together. I use this place as a spot to metaphorically bury a behavior, a thought, something that I want to put behind me, something that I want to improve, something that I want to forget to obsess about, to move on. So that's where I start this walk and talk. Now I am halfway through my walk already, why? Because one of the two points for this walk and talk is do the hard things first. Do the hard things first. The second point is don't focus on stopping, focus on changing, okay? Look how beautiful the leaves are. If you're just listening, it's a great time of year in the Northeast uh, and parts of the Southeast to get out and see the foliage. It's beautiful to be out soon. We won't be able to, although I walk all the time. So on the way here, I stopped 10 different times and did slow count push-ups, which is slow negative on the way down, count to five, hold for five, back up. 10 of those, 10 of the same way for air squats, 20 crunches, and then I get up and I keep walking. Sometimes I get up and I'll do a stride out or a sprint. I've been trying to do more explosive things because I'm old and I want to keep that elasticity and I want to keep that power. Sprinting is a great thing to do, but you have to be careful because you can easily get hurt. Your hamstrings, you can hurt very easily. So I did that already, why? Do the hard things first. We kill ourselves with procrastination. Uh, this is a big thing for me. And that's an important point for you to think about. I am right there with you in the struggle, okay? I am in the struggle. I am flawed and working on flaws and worried about how I seem to repeat the same cycles and mistakes and behaviors and tendencies and thoughts that I'd like not to. Now, do I obsess too much on the negative? Am I too self-critical? Blah, blah, blah. All that matters is what I think about myself. And that's the way I am. So I'm not coming to you from a place of virtue. I'm coming to you as somebody who's trying to work on their location in the area of vice. And even if it's not vice, it's just about getting better, getting better. And there's so much uh, to improve upon. So it's not like I'm telling you this is what has worked for me. This is what I'm trying. And that's why I'll have so many different varieties of thoughts and exercises and processes and deliberative mechanisms and philosophical thoughts that I've read and that I'm trying to apply to my own circumstances. So you do the hard things first. Why? Well, one, because you don't want to. I only take cold showers. It sucks. I'm not ready for this cold plunge thing, man. I, it really gets me. I, I feel like I'm dying the whole time I'm in there. And I'm trying a little bit. What I do is my pool isn't heated. So I go in my pool. Uh, you know, and it's ambient temperature, so it's like 60 degrees, 57 degrees. I can't handle it. But I take cold showers. Why? Because I don't like it. And there is something to the very mild form of asceticism that that brings into your life, that you're doing it even though you don't like it. I guess you could argue, depending on how long I'm in there, which ain't long, uh, that there is a salubrious effect. There's a, a good effect on your health for inflammation and all these other things you can read about exposure to cold, but it's gotta be time. It's gotta be certain temperature. Although if you dig deeper into the research, these lower temperatures are not necessarily better and could be more dangerous. So I take the cold shower. I get up in the morning and I get up 15 minutes before I actually have to so that I can fight with myself about not hitting the snooze. A fight I lost this morning, by the way. But I take my kids to school as many days out of the week that I can. Not that they appreciate it, but it's about the presence, right? So I get up, I do the hard thing. I read, uh, I read, I start every day with the Daily Stoic. Uh, it's broken into 366 different little ideas that Ryan Holiday and his writing partner have taken the time to curate and develop for our own application every day 
life situations, reminders of what the right way is, how to address situations. See, that's what I like about stoicism. And that's what I like about walking is the time to think about how you respond to situations and how you deal with difficulties. Because if life were easy, you know, we, we wouldn't have any of these feelings and conflicts and things that we have. Now look, there is a, a thought that forget this doing the hard stuff, everything's easy, just say everything's easy. I don't have that capacity for self-delusion. I'm probably doing a good enough trick on myself right now as it is, just to stay vertical. But I think that life is hard. And I think that we can recognize that and accept it and then deal with it. And that's what the idea of a more fati, you love everything that's made, you love everything that happens. Oh, so I love when something bad happens? No, but you use it. You appreciate it as an opportunity. And I will tell you, there's no question in my life, 52 years in, I don't remember coming out of successes um, with big lessons and big change as I do when I've had drops, failures, challenges, whatever. So I'm trying to do the hard things first. That's why I did the exercises first before I started talking to you all about what I think about when I'm walking. And I didn't want to do that. I get into this whole brain game with myself. All right, that's enough. Oh, I lost count. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't have to count that slowly on the way down. Oh, I'm starting to get too tired. I won't be able to. All those things. All those things. Oh, I don't want to read now. Let me just check my social media so I can say that I don't like social media again for the 5,000th time. And let, and let me just see what this person's doing. And Dusty's calling me for the 18th time in the last three hours. So let me just talk to her and I'll forget about what I have to do the hard things. Why? Because there's such relief. There's such a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment and we don't want to do it. <laughs> so it, there's actually an achievement there. And when you start to be more comfortable, I really believe in the law of accumulation, positive and negative. Okay. I don't believe in fate. I don't believe in destiny. I don't believe in luck. Uh, I don't believe in any magical thinking. If it helps you, great. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying I don't use it. It's not part of my toolbox. I'm fine with it being in somebody else's, okay? Um, this is not about one way. Uh, you know, there's a whole psychological construct um, that my therapist was telling me about that there are many different roads that lead to the same destination. And it's not about judging, it's about critical judgment of what works for you and trying to help others as an extension of helping yourself. You know, I really believe that about giving and altruism. It's not hard because it feels good. It feels good when you do things for other people, you know? Um, if you're watching right now, the hat, right? You want to say something about the hat? I love these hats. They're cotton caps. It's a little chilly. I sweat. It's a little way of keeping it there. Um, I know, it doesn't look great. Neither do I. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's comfortable. I dig it. I wear them, a buddy of mine gave them to me, a bunch of colors, so that's that. Now, what you learn with this law of accumulation is that one, you do enough negative behaviors long enough, they'll come back to bite you in the behind. Uh, whether it's diet, whether it's any behavior, li literally at work, at home, in your, in your uh, partnership, or whatever, whatever's going on in your personal life with your kids and your friends, it's gonna come back, it's just a question of when. It's the law of accumulation. Uh, how it comes back, who knows? But something will come back. And in that, you'll get your chance to learn and to change. So, the positive side of the law of accumulation is that the more you do things a certain way, the easier it is and the better chance it is that you'll continue to do them that way. You know, you have continually, consistently, and constantly Continually is something that happens, but it's irregular, right? Uh, things don't happen that way all the time. Then you have consistently, which is more, but still there are lapses. Then you have constantly, which is something that you always do, okay? 
Be easy on yourself about what falls into which category. You're going to have lapses. Uh, that's the good thing about a diary or journaling. It's a good thing about an app like Noom uh, or any of these other trackers, the, the ring, the aura ring, which of course I left on the charger. So stupid. See what I'm saying? It's like you screw up all the time. I mean, that's a little nothing, but it does take away from the sense of satisfaction of how much I walked and what that did for me and what kind of energetic release there was from doing the calisthenics uh, during this walk. And it's good for me to look at those numbers because I get a sense of which workouts kind of make a difference and which make uh, a difference less so. But that idea of that positive law of accumulation is, you know, there, there are all these different ideas about what it takes to make a habit, how long it takes, and you'll get all these different uh, theories on it. But I really believe that what they ignore or undervalue is your determination. Now, I think doing the thing, the hard things first helps build determination. And I struggle with this. I really struggle with regularity of discipline. You know, discipline doesn't just mean being harsh uh, or punishing. Discipline is like disciple. It's a follower. It's following something. It's teaching yourself to follow a certain behavior pattern, a certain process, a certain ritual, a certain routine, whatever. And I really struggle with that. I really do. And it was one of the hardest things during these many months that I was trying to figure out what to do and just figure stuff out, period. It was completely metaphysical, existential. You know, I put myself through the real deal there. Um, but I'm happy I did that. But the struggle was I didn't know what to do every day. And that's why when I was planning the show and coming back, I stopped drinking because I don't have a drinking problem, but I drink when I have problems, right? You've probably heard me say that before and may apply to you. I miss it. I like it. And that takes me to my second point. You do the hard things first. It'll make the hard things easier. It'll give you a sense of achievement. It gets things done and it gets easier as you go along. Now, I was talking to somebody about this and they said, well, we don't do that with weights. That's different. That's about preparing yourself to be able to sustain something. That's about loosening up and conditioning the body. So you start with lighter weight and then move to heavier weight for your final sets. Uh, and by the way, people don't always do that, but you do have to warm up. That's different, okay? This is about willpower and discipline and dealing with your mind and your desire to do less and to have it easy and then hate yourself for it later. Now, drinking, any behavior. I'm about to contradict myself, okay? And again, not unusual because I'm in this struggle also. And I have many flaws and I'm working on it and I'm inconsistent. It bothers me just as it does you. And that's okay. It's really okay. Um, I had this coach who was teaching me um, specific blocks and kind of reactions to somebody coming at you with self-defense training. And every time he would overwhelm me and like go too fast and like wind up smacking me upside the head a couple of times. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. He's like almost choking me. Ah, oh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, for him. Anyway, so it's okay that you're going to have your lapses and you're quitting. Just don't quit. Okay? Just don't quit. Never, ever quit. Never quit. Just never quit. When you think about it, tell yourself, no. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to change how intensely, how often, whether I do it alone or with somebody else. Never quit on yourself. Never. Never quit on yourself. Nobody will believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. People can help you believe in yourself, but it is the extraordinary person that reaches into you to give you what you should find for yourself. Never quit. Never quit. 
And when it comes to behaviors, here is the contradiction. I stopped drinking. Well, you just said, don't stop, change. I know. But sometimes there has to be phases, okay? And that can go in either of two directions. Start drinking less. Uh, figure out why you're drinking, when you're drinking, how you eat, when you eat, when you binge, right? Whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to do less of. When you're angry, when you're hostile, when you're impatient, whatever it is. And the first thing is to realize it, right? As to tell you in the 12th step, you got to recognize you have a problem to deal with the problem. Now, I stopped drinking as a phase change. I wanted to just not do it because I didn't like how I was doing it. And I needed to show myself that that's all it was, was choice. And it allowed me to focus on the show. And I'll tell you what, it's been helpful. Now I have wound up replacing that behavior with a lot of late night sugar binging. And it's not an accident that it's, or a coincidence that it's sugar. And I'm not even into sweets. This is about self, self-soothing, self-medicating is probably a little bit too, too strong of a word, but in general, we lose because we have to do it abruptly. That's it, I'm done, I'm never smoking again. That's not easy, okay? I remember when my father stopped smoking, I had seen this smoking commercial on TV. I forget what I was, maybe I was like eight or something, nine, and I cut his cigarette with his scissors while he was on the phone. And I thought that was the look on his face, man. And I immediately, I, I was like, I, I, I just don't want you to die. I don't want you to die. And he said, I think he even wrote about it. That really hit him. And he quit cold turkey. And my father was incredibly disciplined. He had incredible willpower. Okay, I'm not lionizing my pop. I, I really believe he was a solid guy. He really was. Uh, I've fallen so short of where he was on so many different levels. And maybe that's because he had a sense of determination that I just don't have and an intellectual capacity I certainly don't have. And just, he had a chip on his shoulder that I can't even imagine, you know, people treating him as a less than, as an Italian American first generation here. Anyway, it's not easy to just quit. So don't think stop, think change, okay? I'm smoking too much, smoke less, start there. I'm drinking too much, drink less, start there. Start the practice of doing it differently. You wanna lose weight, don't take Ozempic, unless a doctor tells you that's right for you. And that's kind of a BS disclaimer, right? I don't think you should take it. Um, I don't think you need it unless it's an extreme case. Eat less, move more. Okay, eat less, move more. You don't have to lift weights. You don't have to be, become, you know, some YouTube influencer, Instagram influencer. But change. Change how you do it. Think change. I'm never going to get angry at her again. Yes, you will. Change what you do when you do get angry and how you think about it and how you reflect on it and how you communicate feeling sorry for it and that you show a change. Nobody cares about sorry especially once you're in a relationship for a long time. Just show the change. Don't focus on stop, focus on change. And think about it. Think about it before. Try to catch yourself during. Think about after. And change is about people, places, and things as well as your will and determination. You have to think about who am I with when I'm doing this? Do I need to change that dynamic? Where do I go? What kinds of dynamics? Think about it. So don't be so severe. I have to stop. Give yourself time. Process is everything. It's all we have. You don't control outcomes very often. You control effort. You control process. And you're going to fail. You're going to fall short. So you try to train yourself to give yourself a better chance. You walk. You think when you walk, you think about problems, you think about beautiful things, you think about where you are and how fortunate you are and what you want to do and how you want to be. You do the hard things first and you don't beat up on yourself. 
You don't have to be severe. You don't stop. You just try to change. All right, 20 minutes I think is enough. I walk for about an hour. Whatever you're doing, watching or listening this, I wish you the best. And I appreciate you allowing me to share what I'm dealing with and what I'm trying to deal with and how I'm trying to be with you. And that's why I tell you to comment. That's why I tell you to call. It's such a big reason of why I'm still doing what I do. I want the feedback. I learned so much from you guys. And I just hope I can help and contribute as well. All right? Be easy on yourself. See you next time. Let's get after it.